Hi, my name is Zenobia Godstock, and I am the SVP of Communications at Swirls Labs, driving adoption of Hedera, the greenest enterprise public distributed network on the market today. Organizations and governments are taking a hard look at ESG initiatives, not only trying to figure out how they can reduce their carbon footprints, but also how they can bring transparency and accountability to that process. Today, we'd like to share with you some highlights, both from the Hedera ecosystem, as well as from the applications that are building on the network. In these snippets from our recent podcasts, we bring to you some of the most innovative solutions that are being brought to market today to help drive that transparency and computational trust and build an ecosystem that creates visibility and creates opportunities for companies to benefit from going green. I'm really excited to be at the foundation and uh, working on an important project um, around the HBAR Foundation's Sustainable Impact Fund. It's one of the four key pillars for the foundation. It's a hundred plus million dollar fund. And what we're doing is we're giving out grants to organizations to improve transparency around markets for sustainability. And what that really means is we're working with grant recipients to build open source infrastructure platforms and help deploy those platforms so that we improve uh, the transparency of how we use DLT and DLT to get transparent assets on Ledger. What that leads to is better facilitation of auditability of these assets. The types of companies that we're looking for are companies that are interested in creating further transparency in these sustainability markets and these environmental markets. And what they're focused on doing is doing it with high quality um, attributes tied to these assets where they want to get to that nth degree of information and have transparent assets that they can take to the market, which have higher value because of their degrees of transparency. One thing everybody knows is, uh, you know, the, 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 the world should be a pleasant home for all the living things. So that's what we ideally expect. But unfortunately, in the busy world, in the digital world, you know, with the innovations happening all over, things went wrong in the past, you know, I would say 40, 50 years. So we don't need to be a dream, right? You know, having that green uh, sustainability world is very, very, you know, it, it stays as a dream. But there are a lot of actions are being taken by a lot of uh, philanthropic and, uh, you know, good, uh, 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 you know, organizations coming forward to build a lot of sustainability programs to offset all the challenges that is being created to the environment maybe excess emission and uh, excess uh, carbon or uh, GHG emissions, all those stuff that needs to be offset. So those are all, you know, these are all primary issue that is creating a lot of challenges to this uh, mother earth. Now, I think a lot of things are happening now. Our program is primarily to make sure all these sustainability programs are reasonably recognized for the value that they are generating. That is getting compromised because there is no good technology like a trustworthy technology, like a blockchain technology. So we are bringing that into our DLT uh, uh, platform, which we call it as a carbon core uh, program. In this platform, when the data comes in, then that becomes uh, a trustworthy data. When the data and information is trustworthy, then your underlying asset that you are going to hold is also becoming highly trustworthy then that demands for its uh, what the value that it deserves. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's a, a program or a platform that uh, we are building now. At Devu, what we're trying to build out is the trust layer for carbon credits. Um, it basically means making credits as auditable and visible and um, verifiable as possible. Um, and so over the last, I guess, six months, we've gone from strength to strength. In December, we launched our marketplace and we completely sold out of all of our carbon. Um, and so the quest is on to continually find more carbon to feed the marketplace, but making sure that it is auditable, verifiable and can be trusted. Be it a credit or a token itself, you could actually craft user behavior for them to kind of be aligned with um, your mission, your focus. There is a need specifically within sustainability with, with some of the solutions that we put out. Um, with regards to uh, creating ESG assets is those assets need to be publicly discoverable. They need to be traceable. They need to be immutable. 
Um, so we talk about this concept of the trust chain with the Guardian, which is what uh, the Envision blockchain team has been working on within the Hedera ecosystem uh, over the past year. And um, with that Guardian, where you create the ESG assets, the interesting point about it is that you wouldn't be able to get something like this on a private blockchain, where the ESG assets that you create, that they're sitting on the public ledger, you can literally track everything that happened that led up to that ESG asset to be created. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a complicated process that has been uh, kind of hidden behind paper certificates for 10, 15 plus years right now. So, you know, carbon offsets and carbon credits, it's nothing new. Everybody has been talking about them for quite some time. But when companies are investing big money into these carbon offsets because they want to reach their pledges to be carbon neutral, um, they want to have confidence in the uh, assets that they're buying. And the only way to do that is to have some sort of a auditable uh, trust chain linked to that asset that they're buying. Specifically for me, I think one of the problems we have right now is we have a lot of greenwashing. We have um, a lot of um, marketing speak around offsetting carbon as a means of being able to appear to be addressing problems. And one of the issues we have from um, a community, a consumer perspective is how do we know to trust that those initiatives are actually um, uh, real or making a difference. And this is, for me, absolutely where Hedera comes in um, and specifically uh, a, a project that, we're, that we've just recently kicked off with support from the HBAR Foundation called Trustery um, together with Guardian to be able to provide a visualisation layer of the provenance of tokens and NFTs so that we can start to provide confidence to any actors. It may be somebody that is minting a token. It may be somebody that wants to um, check uh, the provenance. It may be an auditor. It may be a consumer that wants to be able to trace back a product or a service back to source and know that there is a chain of trust um, and provenance that they can understand in a beautiful way. I think if we want to be efficient, we have to be able to prove that the things that we're doing are um, real and sustainable. And I can't think of um, a better underlying capability than Hedera Hashcraft to enable that. There were many additional payments around data, data around tokens, tokens around payments, the flexibility and the extensibility into Web3 world um, made it a really simple choice. We have been working with Adara with for the last six months now. So we still keep libraries and things like that and, and explore, but we, we're quite happy with the tokenization service and we've got to go into a, a whole lot of tokenization now with redevelopment of Water Ledger. But water is really, really important because it underpins every economy on the planet, every vertical on the planet has water dependency. But the challenge is that because we can't be clear on how much water we have, we tend, we tend to exceed the sustainable yield. and We extract more than, that we, we, than, we can, than we can. So our solution, Water Ledger, is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for the trading um, of water rights or water allocations. And it actually puts the farmer at the center, but we actually make the market compliant. So using things like the Guardian or um, consensus and tokenization, we're able to tokenize water resource systems. We're able to create digital wallets and allocate water into those digital wallets. And when the water has actually been extracted, we're able to burn those tokens. So we're able to understand at any point in time how much water is in the system, how much water has been used and how much has been shared. And we agree that water is a human right. We need to protect it as a public good, but we also need to ensure it has an economic value because we use water every day for economic good but we need to ensure that we can account for it and we don't take more than we can or extract more than we can before it starts to harm the environment. We're just finishing the Critical Minerals Project with Everledger, which is the biggest blockchain pilot in this country. Uh, last year, the Australian government funded this $3 million project. It's a pilot looking at critical minerals. This is where we're using Hedera. Um, 
So what we're doing with Everledger is looking at the ethical, well, the sustainability of the extraction of rare earth materials. So we're looking at how do we get the water accounting piece into the into the supply chain. So when that rare, rare earth mineral goes into the into the um, into the marketplace, manufacturers are able to see the provenance of where the rare earth has come from and the ESG credentialing, and we're actually doing the water accounting piece. So we're looking at how do we account for water at the site, but also associated with the commodity and wrap that up into a digital credential. And then it becomes uh, discoverable in a supply chain. Our mission here is to sort of accelerate companies transition towards the decarbonized future. So, you know, the projects we have in Netherlands and over here in Australia, they're all aimed at helping companies become carbon neutral. And, you know, we've been doing a pretty good job of that so far. So there was a few things sort of, I suppose, from the, the development side and also the business side, really, that made us really settle with Hedera. Um, from the development side, just a great open source community out there. You know, we're already entrenched in the Hedera community right now. We're working with some great companies like Envision and Miko. You know, they're doing great work in the community. Um, so from a development standpoint, it was it was a no-brainer, really. You know, the, the, the speed of the transactions processing country Hedera is, you know, it's, it's unmatched, really. And then from a business side, I suppose, the biggest thing, and, and I guess it's really what did make us settle on Hedera. Well, sorry, there's two things. First of all, it's definitely like the fees being pegged to the US dollar. You know, being able to have stable fees for us is huge. I, I, like personally, I don't understand how any other companies are working with any other blockchain for business applications. It doesn't make sense. You know, we, we've, we've all seen the volatility in cryptocurrencies. You know, one day your token can be worth $100, the next day it can be worth 200 So how can you go out to a client and price a solution that's meant to last for five years when you have no idea what the fees are going to be in five years? So having that stability with Hedera is huge. And then obviously the, the second big thing for us, it was, you know, the, the whole greenness of Hedera, you know, being a, a carbon neutral network for us in the ESG sustainability space, it's a, it's a no brainer. You know, as I was talking about before, when I first came on board, you know, the, the whole thing around cryptocurrencies and blockchain was the huge energy consumption. And we're still seeing that on blockchain, such as, you know, Bitcoin obviously is one, the current uh, Ethereum setup as well. You know, there's just huge energy consumers. But, you know, we're looking at Hedera and correct me if I'm wrong, it's 0 0.00017 kilowatts per transaction. Some minute number. And it's, it's like, how can you go with anything else in this space? One of our projects we have currently running is with the Queensland government. So they're a major state government over here in Australia for anybody who is nowhere. And so we've come into one of their buildings in the Gold Coast Health and Knowledge Precinct, which is our timelines as headquartered. And we're doing a full energy monitoring, solar forecasting and uh, ESG reporting solution for them. So we're coming in doing the whole carbon emissions reporting. At the end of the day, the state government, they're looking to host the first carbon neutral Olympics in 2032. And so they need solutions then that can actually be or prove how carbon neutral these Olympics are. So we're coming in, we're doing a demonstration project for them uh, down here on the Gold Coast. And so we're, we have the full suite. So we're doing granular energy monitoring. So every five minutes we're reporting on our energy usage. All that data is then being logged to the blockchain and verified using the full trust chain that we have in there as well. And so we're providing them the energy footprint so they can monitor all the different nine tenancies, 10, 10 tenancies that they have on site all individually, it's granularity they've never had before. And then we're also able to plug into some solar forecasting APIs. So we've done some geospatial mapping into roof space. We have solar panel information in there. So they don't have any solar producing assets. What we've done is we've said, hey, look, if you have these solar producing assets based on your energy uses, which you're currently capturing, here's what your carbon footprint would look like. So we're able to come to them and say, look, based on what you're going to have installed, we can say that this building will very likely be carbon neutral or this building needs more solar, this building needs less solar, depending on what they want to do. And, you know, it, it really gives them insights that they've never had before. Like they, they want to have buildings across Queensland carbon neutral. So it's like, hey, do you install extra solar on this building so that it offsets, you know, building B? Or, hey, do we just go and buy a solar farm so it offsets building A, B and C? It's all data and granularity and insights that they've really never, ever had before. So we're providing that to them. And of course, on the back end of that, we're using the Hedera consensus service to validate all those energy readings and then also the token service to mint those carbon offset and carbon emission tokens. So if they want, then they can use the Hedera network to go off and purchase 
carbon offsets if they're not actually carbon neutral or sell their excess carbon offsets if they are carbon neutral and they want to gain some extra revenue from that. So, you know, being able to plug into that network, you know, we're starting to see you know, places like Dovu come online where they can go and buy their tokens. You know, it really makes our lives a whole lot more simple. We think about that by helping organizations understand what it means to, say, transition to cleaner sources of energy, um, reducing overall environmental uh, footprint or impact on the environment, and being able to start to look at their core uh, power sources and operations whereby they can transition from a brown energy source through to a green energy source. And really, that's what it means over time. But it's also extending when we say being green or being sustainable, you know, the majority of sustainability impacts actually result from a company's activities in their supply chain, um, as well as third parties, suppliers, um, and all of the vendors and partners within that company's wider ecosystem. So it's also about helping the ecosystem drive more of a net zero emission um, and reduce, you know, carbon intensive operations at the end of the day. For example, what is related to ESG disclosure, this must be made available for the public and must be certified and must be guaranteed that there are no uh, modification of this data and everything is, is tamper proof. We're really looking at the carbon offset project marketplace that banks need to effectively fund um, a lot of enterprises that are looking to offset their emissions. So we are using Hedera Distributed Ledger Technology to effectively be able to tokenize a, a digital asset, which is the carbon project, and allow for um, customers of the bank to purchase those carbon offset credits um, and be able to reduce their emissions over time. So we do see that banks will be needing to interrogate blockchains, not only in that use case, but another use case would be for example, the, the actual customer of the bank's uh, footprint, say, in the supply chain where a bank can interrogate that particular blockchain with all of that environmental footprint data um, and know that it is verifiable, it's um, sourced, it's auditable, it's traceable back to the source as well and has all of those protocols in place to really establish evidence for not only the bank but the, the financial system for the regulators so that we really have this transparency and an ecosystem more broadly. We hope that you've enjoyed hearing from some members of the Hedera community and from some of the applications building innovative sustainability solutions on top of the Hedera network. There is still much work to be done, but these companies are starting to form the basis for a more transparent, trustworthy way for us to all reduce our carbon footprint. We look forward to keeping you updated on our progress.